So, and granted, we didn't fully finish the lesson, but a lot of it is review. I think, aside from like one or two questions on the test, I think you've learned everything you need to do the entire test and this instructor is not. It's just like a few more lessons that have new stuff, the rest is review. So headphones out, don't look at your screens for now. Listen to what I'm telling you and then faster we get through this, the more time you have to work on your stuff. So today we were investigating what we can learn from graphs that represent exponential functions. So we didn't get to the part where they intersect, but just think about like in other lessons, like in our systems of equations, when the two lines intersect, what does that mean about the situation? Where they intersect, they are So when any two lines intersect, I'm just using linear as an example because we've seen that before. What can you say about where they intersect? That is where they meet. That is where they are the same. That's where they are equal. So whatever situation is going on, say that this green line is company A and this red one is company B, whatever is going on, they have an equal amount at where they intersect. Is it about this? Okay. So where they intersect is where they are equal, related back to whatever situation is going on. So if X is supposed to be time, and maybe, I don't know, Y could be sales, it could be really anything, then at that time frame that they meet at, they have the same amount of sales, which would be like the Y. That's the same for exponentials. It's just now the graphs look different. They're not perfectly why. Where they intersect is where they are equal. And then knowing two points on a graph of an exponential function, you can write an equation for the function. That I think is the harder part. That is on your practice. And so we're gonna refer back to the notes. And I know not all of you have had algebra yet. You can take some notes right now. But let's refer back to this graph. Notice that they give you three different coordinates, not necessarily in order. Like it's not zero, one, two, three, four. It's zero, two, and four. What I would suggest when you don't have all the points right next to each other, I consider organize your data in a table, but leave room for what's missing. So for example, we're missing the one between zero and two. We're missing the three between two and four. We're also missing the outputs. Sometimes it's easy to estimate, like in today's lesson, it was easy to estimate that at one, the output is 200. Like that I can read from my graph, but I know on your homework, it was hard even for me to estimate. So I'm going to show you a way that'll help in those situations. Um, so pretend I didn't know this, I'll even erase it. I know that to go from 400 to this number, I have to multiply by B, a common factor. I know to get from whatever this number is to this number, I have to multiply by B again. B is what we're trying to solve for, that's what we're trying to figure out. So if I know that 400 times B times B will equal 100, that can help me solve for what my common factor is. Um, B times B, another way to shorten that is B squared, not um, 2B, that would be different. So I'm multiplying them. And then you're trying to isolate the B, you're trying to get the B alone. So start with what's farther from the B. Would that be the two or the 400? And what's opposite of multiplying 400? Dividing. Whatever you do on one side of the equal sign. Looking for a class 
fast response, whatever I do on one side is the equal sign. Okay. We're getting closer to figure out what B is. B squared is equal to, when you divide this out, one fourth or 0.25, I'll leave it as one fourth. What's opposite of squaring something? Nope. How can I undo to the power of two? No. No. Is it the answer to this? Opposite of squaring is. Maybe you guys are confusing the symbol with the division symbol, but let me put it to you this way. 10 squared is 100, right? You know what the square root of 100 is? 10. So the opposite of squaring is to square root it, whatever you do on one side, you do to the other. And then I get the true value for what B is, which I'm going to need my calculator. But I want to find the square root of one fourth. So in your list of buttons, the square root button looks like this. Almost looks like a division symbol, but it's not a root symbol. And one fourth is what we're taking the square root of. Gives you that, which you can also make a fraction if you prefer the fraction. And now that's your B. Okay. So if it's not easy to estimate what your B is, what you're having to multiply by each time, then do this method. And I'll leave this method up. I think that'll help with something that's on your homework right now which is why I'm showing it to you now. Um, so what's half of 400? Good, so 400 times one half is 200. 200 times one half is 100. What's 100 times one half? So that is my B, um, which would help make the equation later, but that's how you can solve for it if they don't give you two points that are right next to it, okay? Questions, comments, concerns? And again, Mondays are like short days. So even the lesson, like we didn't fully meet the learning targets. Um, right now, you might not get an attempt in, and that's where I would understand you're not getting a full attempt in. But um, I still want you to try it. If that's too hard and you want to work on lesson 12 or something else you're missing, that's fine. But no, like you're all here. You're also responsible for the mastery part of the lesson for me. John? Yes. Any other questions? Okay, so I'm leaving this up as an example. Okay, so number one on the lesson 13 practice, it tells you that it's growing exponentially the x-axis is for weeks, the p is for population. It only gives you two coordinates. So with those two coordinates, I need to figure out what my factor is for each week, not for every two weeks. So if this helps, I'd say make a table, organize your information so that you can kind of fill in what's missing. So it gives us one, 900 and 3, 8, What's missing between the one and the three? So we know that to go from 900 to 8,100, I had to times by B once and then twice. Does that make sense? Everyone with me so far? B is what we're trying to figure out. Okay, so kind of similar to that example I showed you before, it's going to be 900 times B and then times B again to get 8,100. We can make the B um, B squared. You know, the B times B is B squared. And then solve for the B. What's opposite of multiplying 900? So we're going to do that on each side of the equal sign. I have 
have b squared on the left side. On the right side, what does this divide out to? Sorry, one more time. Okay, that's probably right. That's probably right. I'm just doing mental math, but um, that sounds right. So then B squared, the B is still not alone. How do I cancel out squaring something? Whatever you go know, one side. So that cancels out the exponent. What's the square root of nine? So my weekly factor is going to be three. If I times 900 by three, I get this missing piece. If I times 2,700 by three, I get 8,100. Does that make sense? Okay. That's how you can figure out if they're not right next to each other. Then it says, what was the population when it was first measured? So what's the X value whenever it's first measured? So basically wants me to work backwards now. So what's opposite of multiplying by three? What's 900 divided by three? 300. So now you're working backwards. You do the opposite and you have to work backwards. So multiplying three is dividing by three. So 300 was when it first started, the initial amount. Now to make the equation, and they have some spaces for you to organize it. But since it's growing exponentially, what should the format be? A times B to the X power are exponential functions. Granted, they have some notation here already. They use function notation, that's fine. You know, this would be like my Y, right? So then I need to put my initial amount, which was what? So 300 will go in the first blank. That should not be attached to an exponent. Sometimes they do switch the order. The initial amount should never be attached to the exponent. What should be attached to the exponent is your common factor, your B, which was what? Three. Three times by three times, right? That's what we did. That's what it should be. Questions on that? Well, tomorrow you'll have more time to finish this one, but you also have less than 14. And I think an hour is more than enough time to do like, I don't know, eight problems yeah. in total. So we can pick it up here tomorrow. I encourage you to try it yourself too.